Hey guys, another video for our Myths About Japan playlist. A couple of weeks ago, one of the patrons on Patreon asked us about the Japanese, Japanese decluttering system that he'd uh, seen, talked about on the internet. And yes, we had heard about it, but quite a bit actually, we do hear about it quite a bit, but almost all of it was from outside Japan. So, there might have been once where there was something on TV, maybe, we were talking about it, over the last couple of weeks we've been talking about it amongst family members and friends and asking people, hey, what do you know about this, what do you know about this, and we, we thought we had seen something about it a while ago on TV, um, but most of what we've seen about it has been through outside Japan sources, so on the internet. Facebook, lots of stuff on Facebook, um, people sending us stuff on Facebook, have you seen this, what do you think of this? Um, there's a few memes too, a few memes where they've, where they've made a joke of it, you know, I've started doing the Japanese decluttering system, and I've stopped, as, as you know, where, the Japanese decluttering system where anything that doesn't bring you joy you throw away, and so I've given away my job, and uh, you can find them. Japanese decluttering system memes, right? There's lots of them on the on the net. So, and that was sort of like the, from the outside point of view, that was sort of the central part of it, was, was that anything that doesn't bring you joy, you throw away. And one of our Australian family members was talking to us about, oh, we saw this thing about the Japanese thing, and, and anything that doesn't bring you joy, you throw it away, right? So, it seems, so we spent the last couple of weeks um, talking to our Japanese friends and family and people we know in Japan and also some of the people that we know outside Japan just to get a few different perspectives on it and we've sort of looked up a bit about it as well um, to find out more. The lady who wrote the book that triggered all this her name is Mari uh, M-A-R-I-E so probably English speakers would say Mari or Marie or something like that but in Japanese it'll be Mari uh, Mari uh, Kondo is the lady who wrote the book and we looked up her website and had a look at some stuff on there and it seems that like with almost all the myths there is an element of truth so the myth is that this is a Japanese decluttering system and and the myth is that this is the Japanese way of living right that seems to be the outsider's perspective on the way this is being talked about is it's it's the way the Japanese people do it, you know? And then there's this big connection with this lady and her book. And, oh, where to start? Where to start? It's really difficult to, to analyze these myths and, and, and throw away the stuff that's, that's, that's the myth, you know? The stuff that's being talked about to the point where it's become something that's not real. So, okay, we'll, we'll start back earlier. Let's look, at, let's look at Japanese life and Japanese way of living as far back as as you can go right back into history the japanese way of living has always been fairly minimalist you know if you look at, at traditional japanese rooms um, and even in the old if you look at the old art japanese art from hundreds of years ago that depict old rooms you know usually they were really simple you, usually the screens themselves had simple art drawn on them or painted on them um, and very, very simple. Usually the, the only part of a room, of a formal room in, Japanese, in a Japanese home or in a castle or in a place where Japanese people lived was usually the tokonoma that we showed you before. The tokonoma is a bit of a, like an alcove. Usually it's only in a, like a formal, formal old room and there's an alcove. And in that alcove they usually had maybe a simple vase with one flower in it, or sometimes more elaborate, um, and a and a um, and a scroll on the wall, usually a simple scroll as well, and that was usually it. There might be a small shelf in a corner with something on it or something like that. But some of us come from from other cultures where you know having lots of pictures on the walls of our family members and lots of lots of decoration in the rooms and you know things called whatnots some of you might know whatnot you know something in the corner that's just a bunch of shelves with just stuff on it just souvenirs and just random pieces of stuff 
um, all over it, you know, and knickknacks. And you guys can probably think of other words for what you call those useless things that we decorate our houses with, you know. Um, sometimes it's gifts that people have given us or it's stuff that we've bought when we've been somewhere. It's sort of a souvenir thing. Or sometimes it's just some funny decorative thing that we have up on a shelf or something. And some of us come from backgrounds where we, our, our rooms and our houses, our homes are cluttered up with stuff like that. Um, but the, the traditional Japanese way of living doesn't usually have that. Um, usually they don't hang pictures on the walls. Usually there's not shelves with lots of useless stuff on them. Um, you know that tokonoma with the scroll and one simple little decoration. It might be a piece of gnarly old wood that they polished up sitting on the floor. You know, in the tokonoma and a scroll and that's it and they change the scroll for the different seasons. And that's it, that'll be the whole decoration, possibly in the whole house. You know, bedrooms usually weren't cluttered up with stuff either. Bedrooms usually are fairly, fairly sort of practical, everything that's fairly practical. And, and modern Japanese living is pretty much the same. You know, people don't like cluttering their places up with stuff. Um, we, as we've talked about on previous videos, souvenirs, popular souvenirs for Japanese people are usually food. So when they go to somewhere interesting, they'll bring back food as a souvenir for themselves, but more likely they'll bring back food as a souvenir for, for their friends and family and co-workers and people like that. They'll give food as a, as a souvenir, and which is a really practical thing. It doesn't go on a shelf and, and gather dust. It gets eaten and then that's it, you know? So it's a practical sort of a thing to give. Um, another one we talked about in a really old video was when you go to competitions or festivals and things like that, uh, with martial arts competitions was what just came to mind, but, but thing, places like that or events or, or things like that where they give away stuff, um, quite often they'll give away toilet paper and, and um, washing machine powder, you know, clothes washing powder and uh, paper towels or um, the little white towels, you know, the little white towels that everybody carries around with them in Japan, they'll give them away. So usually the, the stuff that they give is stuff you can use. It's usually not stuff that goes on a shelf or on a wall. It's stuff that you can use, it's practical stuff, which at first actually seems a bit weird. You go to some competition and win a big bag of toilet paper, at first can feel a bit weird, but it soon becomes really obvious that it's a brilliant idea because it's not some useless thing that's going to go in a drawer somewhere, it's it's something you're going to take home and, and use, you know. Um, just a side side note, when I used to do Kudo, I went for a couple of years, never had to buy toilet paper or, or, clo or uh, clothes washing powder, because I just brought home big bags of it from the, from the competitions and never <laughs> had to buy any. So it's practical, you know, so that's always been the way Japanese people live, you know. I mean, there's exceptions to this, of course. There are some Japanese people who clutter up their house with useless stuff, you know. Um, but, but generally, you know, that's the traditional way of living and it's also the modern way of living where, where you go to people's houses and it's, it's usually really simple. Uh, I mean, the modern version now, of course, is there's big screen TVs and there's, and there's digital, you know, um, DVDs and DVD, digital video recorders and there's and there's games and there's all that sort of stuff, but it's all practical stuff. You know, there'd be very little decoration, sometimes little bits here and there, little bits of decoration, but to com compared to so the, the cultures some of us come from, there'd be, there's very little. Um, which is just the way Japanese way of living, simple and clean and tidy. Um, and then, of course, space is always an issue. You know, people don't usually have extra space to clutter up with rubbish and stuff here. So it's just the way they live. So it sort of seems that, and that, that thing about that thing about the joy, I'm only gonna mention this briefly because it's just weird. That, 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 that's, that seems to be the thing that everyone's focusing on is that, is that oh, this lady says, or the, the Japanese way, that what the lady says isn't a myth. It's the fact that, that it's been promoted as, or being talked about as the Japanese way, where if something doesn't bring you joy, you don't keep it, you throw it away. Well, no. I mean, the people, you know, we've never heard anyone here talk like that. In the last couple of weeks when we've been asking everybody, most of them had never even heard about that idea or heard about that book. Um, but we would suggest that 
the Japanese way is that if something's not practical, you don't have it in the first place. Um, and as for things getting thrown away, I mean, we've talked about that before. If something becomes a bit old, and it doesn't have to be real old to be considered old, you know, a TV that's three years old or a refrigerator that's five years old or something will be considered old. Things that are considered old are thrown away. But, but keeping things based on whether they give you joy, never heard of it, never heard of it. Never heard of that idea in Japan at all. Only heard about it from people outside Japan saying it. The Japanese way is if it doesn't bring you joy, you throw it away. Never heard of it. And it seems bizarre because it's sort of quite the opposite. The, 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 the stuff that Japanese people have in their homes is the stuff that's practical and useful. So that would probably be the reality. If, if, if it's not practical or useful, you, you don't have it in the first place. Would be, the, would be their way of thinking. They wouldn't have it in the first place to throw it away. So that, that whole thing is bizarre. That'd have to go down as the myth because as far as it being the Japanese, again, what that lady says in her book or what she says, you know, I, I think it seems that, that she has done, or her publishers are brilliant at marketing. That seems to be the case. What comes to mind, some of you might remember, there was a book a few years, quite a few years ago, called The Secret. And so you might remember that it was just basically a book written by some dude who said, if you imagine something hard enough, um, it'll come to pass, right? And of course, there was an element of truth in that. And with a lot of these things, there's an element of truth in them. And that seems to be what carries it through is that people go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's sort of the same as what athletes do and people, don't they? Successful business people have an image of what they want to achieve and then they go and achieve it, you know? And that book sort of took it one step further and said that it's sort of made it seem a bit mystical, that if you imagine stuff hard enough, it'll just come to pass, it'll just happen by magic sort of thing. It didn't say that, but that was the image. And that was huge at the time. And it just seemed like the actual essence of it was like, duh, it was like obvious. It was just stating the obvious thing that that's it, always been the case. If you want to achieve something, you've got to first visualize it. Well, yeah, duh, you know, if you're going to, you're going to do a jigsaw puzzle, you first have to imagine what it's going to look like finished to be able to start doing it, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a sort of a fundamental thing of life. If you're going to make a cake, you first have to visualise what the cake's going to be like when it's finished before you can start making it, right? You know, it's like a fundamental, simple thing. But what was clever about that book was the name. They made it seem sort of mystical, the secret, right? And then the marketing was brilliant, and the guys, you know, no idea how many copies of that book were sold, but you couldn't, couldn't, you just kept hearing about it all the time, didn't you, at the time? You know, everybody was telling you, oh, have you read The Secret? You've got to get it, it's amazing, you know? And of course, what happened to that? It faded away, didn't it? And this, this sort of, this sort of story, this story with this uh, Maria Kondo and this, and this, you know, Japanese, Japanese um, decluttering system seems to be a bit the same. It seems to be that her pub publishers are brilliant marketing people because wh when we start to look into what it actually is about, it just seems to be fundamentally simple. The things that you use, you put in places where they're easy, easy to access and, and tidy and, and then when you finish using them, you put them away. You know, there's nothing, seems to be nothing more clever about it than that. And the stuff that you never use, then maybe you throw it away. Well, yeah, again, duh. It, it seemed when we were looking into it, there's, um, there's reviews of a book and, and, and what do you call it? Um, overviews, what do you call that? Um, digest versions of her book. And there's also videos that she's made. She did a Google talk with some homeless Google employee sitting on the stage next to her. That was funny, just as a sidebar. Have a look at that. <laughs> Google, some Google homeless looking guy in his jeans and daggy sand shoes sitting on the stage with her, being cool and relaxed on his bouncy ball. He wasn't really on a bouncy ball, that's just a bit added that in. But, but it seemed that there was nothing that she was saying or nothing that, that anybody's talked about really that wasn't obvious. That, you know, that if you want to have a clean, tidy house, oh, tidy, tidy being the key word, if you want to have a tidy house, just the fundamental, simple things required to do that, you know? Put your stuff away when you're finished using it. Keep stuff where it's, you know, where it's accessible for where you use it. Um, get the kids used to putting their stuff away. Uh, 
if you don't, if, if something that you never use, maybe consider throwing it away. Well, you know, that was sort of the, the bottom line. So, yeah, bizarre, just bizarre. Like a lot of these myth things, when we first hear them, it's like, what? You know? <laughs> and then often, the more you look into them, more, more it leaves you shaking your head going, what? You know? What? What? So, just again, again, it's one of those things. It's, it looks like clever marketing by the publishers, and it seems one of those things too. Some people seem to have a skill of presenting things in a way that really gets the attention of social media and people, you know, and it seems to be the case, is that once they get a ball rolling on something, like in this case her book, which has been made into English as well, um, once they get the ball rolling on social media and so on with something like this, it just gets a life of its own, doesn't it? And they just stand back and sell books, don't they? And obviously that's what's happening. And you know, all that free marketing, all the people on the internet talking to each other about it. Have you seen this? Have you seen this? And that's how we got onto it. You know, we might have seen, there might have been something on TV a while back about it that we didn't really watch, but we were aware of something that was on TV. But all the, what, what got us interested in it was everyone talking about it, you know, on, on social media, on Facebook in particular. You know, this Japanese decluttering system, you know, and the book. The book and the and, and then once you dig a bit deeper you start to find out about the lady herself and, and so on so so yeah look what's myth and what's reality um, well the reality is yeah Japanese people live generally and not always the case I mean we've seen some pretty messy houses you know we've been to some pretty messy houses some people here are not very tidy it's true you know surprising you step through the door and it's like whoa some houses but generally pretty tidy and, and generally not a lot of clutter and not a lot of decoration. You don't have lots of photos of here's me in Europe or here's me doing this or me doing that. You don't usually have photos like that in the place of, of, of family members or anybody either, except dead ones, interestingly. Usually in the formal room, if they have a butsudan, if they have a, a shrine, sometimes they'll have photos of, of grandfather or grandmother or, or people who've passed away and their photo will be up on the wall and it's a standard size and it's a standard sort of like a big passport photo um, and that's traditional too that's always been the case and that goes up in the corner of the wall top of the wall where it meets the ceiling usually so it's, that's not really decoration that's out of respect for those relatives to show that they're not forgotten but as far as decoration yeah almost nothing and even outside you know those of you seen Japanese gardens Japanese stone gardens and things again usually very simple and uncluttered and tidy and it's just a Japanese way so again, this lady that's written this book and her publisher are just really, really clever. And they've just sort of marketed it like it's some sort of new idea. And it's as old as the hills, you know. I mean, thousands of years ago, if you wanted to have a tidy cave, you know, you'd apply the same principle probably. <laughs> so there's nothing really new to it. Um, and yet, the truth is, yes, it is the sort of the Japanese way of living, this simple and uncluttered sort of life. Um, but the throwing things away, if they don't bring you joy, would have to go in the BS, in the BS basket and, and, and as a myth, because we've never heard anyone here talk like that. It, it, it's, it seems to be the total opposite of the reality, because they wouldn't be throwing away stuff that didn't bring them joy, because the only things, most of the things in, the, in their homes are things that are practical, that they can't throw away because they need them. That's why they're there in the first place. So if it doesn't bring you joy, it, that's sort of not a Japanese way of thinking either. Those of you who've seen our hardship and suffering video, you know, a, a t trying to attain joy isn't a Japanese way of living at all, you know. It, it sort of wouldn't go in their list of priorities. Trying to achieve joy with their possessions isn't really a Japanese way of thinking at all. So that's bizarre. That's absolutely bizarre. So again, as with all these myths, it's a combination of a little bit of reality, starts off a bit of truth, and it gets distorted. And it's always the distorted bit that, that attracts more interest. You know, it's the stuff like you, it doesn't bring you joy, throw it away. I mean, that's sort of, that's such a, it's like that, that the book called the, the Secret, isn't it? It's something about that mystical, oh, if it doesn't bring you joy, oh, what a great idea. So if you throw away everything that doesn't bring you joy, all you'll be left with is joy. Right? It's sort of, you can see why people are interested in that idea, but it's just so far from reality. And, and to connect it with being a Japanese way is just not, not, 
real at all. It's bizarre. It's just bizarre. So yeah, okay, okay, trying to keep it as clear as possible. Japanese usually have tidy and uncluttered homes. Um, it probably has nothing at all to do with that lady's book <laughs> and nothing at all to do with their level of joy or the amount of joy contained in each object is in the in the BS basket. So yeah, bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. So next time you see it being discussed on the internet, as with all these things, there are so many myths. We don't talk about all of them, but we, we would see at least one Japanese myth a week Sometimes one a day, sometimes more than one a day, because people send them to us. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? And quite often, we'll just respond with it. It's BS, or it's it's not right, or it's or it's true. Occasionally, it'll be true, but so much of it is just absolute nonsense, you know. And people seem to love the nonsense more than the reality, don't they? It's like conspiracy conspiracy ideas, isn't it? The conspiracy seems to always be conspiracy myth always seems to be more popular than the reality. People just seem to love the bizarre stuff, don't they? Even if it's not true. So, anyway, there it was. <laughs> it doesn't bring you joy. If this video didn't bring you joy, very sorry. <laughs> More videos coming soon.